is the Return of the Jedi TIE Interceptor by MPC. It's a snap! A Golden Opportunity Kit. Golden Land of Opportunity and Adventure. So, which obviously this was introduced in the movie Return of the Jedi. And this is a pretty old kit. I want to build one of these before I build a final Star Wars kit. Uh, actually, I did build the X-Wing fighter in the, the Snap series when I was in high school. Man, I didn't care for it too much. But then again, I was pretty novice and uh, I didn't get the, the X-Wing. The, uh, the, the, the foils, the, the wings, I didn't get them uh, lined up properly again. So I got this for a really great price on Yahoo Auctions Japan, which I call Yaj, because it had some loose parts. Um, the main hull was already off of the runners, and uh, the pilot was just barely hanging on, and so he came off. Interestingly enough, the pilot is actually the A-wing pilot. What were they thinking? I have no idea. The A-Wing pilot, uh, or the, the pilot that comes with the A-Wing model doesn't even look like anything from Star Wars, plus it's the wrong size. Um, I will use that for uh, the A-Wing kit that I also have. So, actually, that model kit, buying that was my motivation in getting this one, because uh, I saw the pilot and I thought, oh gosh, that's terrible. The cockpit in this one, I don't care. You won't be able to see inside it very well anyways, so who cares. So, uh, yeah, this is the, uh... This is the kit. It has these really ridiculous landing gears, which are not even faithful whatsoever to source material. So, these are going to play. But, uh, pretty decent detail, I think. This is, these are pretty nice, I think. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get started on this. As you can see, these gates are really terrible. Look at that, how thick these gates are. I guess I can't complain too much, but... Um, yeah, it is an older kit. So, and that part's not even gonna be seen. So, it's uh, apparently, what, well, this fits inside, like so, yeah. um, I guess, that's weird, it doesn't really uh, fit, like, it doesn't snap onto something, it doesn't hold onto something inside. That is rather bizarre. Huh. Very strange. And one thing with assembly of this model, this was, um, I found it on another internet video on YouTube. It pointed out the, some of the, like, one of the most ridiculous flaws about this model is that any Star Wars nerd knows that the top of the TIE Fighter is the hatch. The Kenner toys, this is the hatch. They enter and exit this spaceship through the top. Durr. The people who made this model felt that uh, somehow they enter through the back, but everybody knows that that's just ridiculous. I mean, this, this is the, uh, the back of the spaceship. This is where the engines are. So, I'm gonna have to glue this in place and uh, maybe work, maybe fill in some of this with uh, putty or something. Ridiculous. And then there's a clear piece here that goes here, but I'm um, going to paint over that. It's just going to be solid, no clear. Okay, I will attempt to demonstrate a preliminary build. I did this last night to kind of get a feel for this. Okay, so this is unpainted, so I'm going to disassemble this. I'm just showing you how this all fits together. So there's like a little groove here, 
And there's a little peg here, so the window fits over the peg, like so. And then this little lip that comes out sticks into here. Now, I found that it is actually easier to put the cockpit up in the top part first. Try to get it lined up. Then you see there's a there's a groove in here, right there. That uh, this peg also fits in to the bottom part. And this is um, you know you'd think that with this peg that they might like mold it so it'll like just snap into place. But no, that would be too difficult, apparently. So you want to get this ring into this, these little, this slot here. So, and of course, get the pegs into the holes. This is a little bit easier said than done. So actually, um, see, I'm doing this wrong. Uh, the little s slot goes around the canopy, not not this ring here, so let's uh, put this yeah, there we go so I just snap! indeed the problem is yeah, I'd have to clamp it you know, when, I, when it comes to gluing, I'll just get some some clamps here, maybe. Put the clamps on them. <laughs> I always, oh, I always think of the, uh, the the mafia robot guy from uh, Futurama. The clamps, put the clamps. So anyhow, I'm rambling. The problem is though, is that this is, doesn't really. I mean, it's kind of flush up here, but I don't know. Maybe I glued this pre prematurely. Seems to be flush up here, but maybe I need to bring it down more. Maybe I need to un undo the glue and put this thing on last. Maybe. Maybe I made a mistake. I don't know. Now. I have removed one of these. No, it's not the same. I need to figure out which one is which. Which way is up, which way is down. But, um, you know, it's not identical, so there must be a top and there must be a bottom. Um, but anyhow, this just uh, slides into the groove here, like so. This is apparently the easiest part. There. Maybe it goes in like that? I don't know. Or maybe I got it backwards. Maybe this goes in like this. Maybe this is a better fit this way. Uh, I'll have to look at the instructions. But, uh, and then there's a little part that goes here. So, to uh, remove this from this, uh, from the sprue, the uh, gates are pretty, pretty big here, so it would be best to cut them at a distance away from the part first there oops I missed one see this is really thick there you know when I was first doing this stuff I would just kind of like just wiggle it until I got loose and then just pop them off, but now I know better than that. Um, these side cutters are pretty accurate, so I have no qualms with cutting it close like that. Some people prefer, prefer not to, they would rather use an X-Acto blade, but parts like this I think are flat enough and big enough that uh, it's actually better to use the, the nippers like this, the cutters. 
See, that looks pretty nice. I just have to file it just a little bit, and then I'm done. There we go. One last piece. There. No issues there at all. So, there we go. Now, uh, this is what it would look like. Now, let me bring this up here. Now, this model has these stupid legs that come down here. That's ridiculous. Now, in the Star Wars comic books, you would see sometimes TIE fighters just resting on, the, on their, uh, their solar panels. And uh, I don't think that's... I don't know. In the movie, you just see them in racks. So I would think that they just kind of like, you know, they're dispensed from the racks, either from like a Death Star or a Star Destroyer or something. I, I don't know. It would seem kind of improbable, but just have them like resting like this. Especially because, you know, I guess you would have to use repulsor lifts or something and make them hover or something, but I don't know. I don't get that. Um, I don't think these things are meant to be, you know, to land. Um, they need to be put in racks, but anyhow, I'm rambling like a nerd. So the problem is going to be here. I'm going to have to make this look pretty. I might have to undo the glue here and, and reposition it. But, um, yeah. So the last parts to be uh, cut off from the sprues are these thingies. There. And this goes in the hole somehow. There. Looks like I might need to dig, make the hole a little bit bigger. It doesn't seem to be lining up properly, I don't know. Anyhow, but yeah, then this uh, fits into there and locks it in place. So, I do think there should be some gluing and perhaps a little bit of putty. Uh, depends on if I can get this thing to glue without, you know, the, the, the seams coming, uh, popping open like that. That's a bit troublesome. But, uh, pretty cool. Now, other people's builds I have seen of this, they leave the canopy alone. I don't like that. What I want to do is mask the inside here and paint the outside. So, just mask all of these little sections, these trapezoids, and then the, what well, is an octagon, right? Yeah, in the middle. And then the spokes, the frame of the window. Um, I want to have that painted as, as uh, the rest of the spaceship. The, the TIE fighter, the you know, TIE interceptor. I think it'll look a lot better than just leaving the window as is. So that's my goal. I used an X-Acto blade here to cut off that. There was like this peg that stuck out that you're supposed to put the pilot on, but since I'm not going to be uh, putting the pilot in this, I just, just cut it off and then I'll just, uh, I'll leave the hole there, just the way it is, I guess. You know, whatever. So, I'm just going to paint this matte black. I'm sorry, this is a semi-glass. I ran out of matte, so that's good enough, I guess. Cockpit interior has been completed. 
I have <clears throat> um, used some silver paint here for the buttons. That was um, using testers and ammo paints, and then the different colored buttons here. I did those with Posca pens, which are these. So now that the interior is completed, I'm going to build this. Yay. I just finished painting the inside of the cockpit matte black, flat black. I can begin to assemble this now. A little bit of the black got on the outside, but that's okay because I will be priming this anyways. I'm spraying the solar foils with uh, gunmetal, TS-38 gunmetal. I already did the inside, so I'll do the outside next. Okay. Done. So. What I am going to do is mask off these uh, inside parts here with masking tape and then paint the outside uh, the regular whole colored because you know they got two different colors here there's like the whole color and then uh, these uh, the solar panel or whatever things that's my plan okay what I've done right now is I've I had to super glue this back part on then I used some putty to fill in because there's, there's a bunch of uh, space. Didn't really fit all. It didn't really fit together very well, so I puttied it. So now I haven't done the rest of this. You know, I can take this apart here, like so. Let's see, these are not. You know, it hasn't been fit together yet. This is, uh, does not have the, cock, the cockpit interior inside there yet. So, right now I'm just working on this part here. So, it, it looks fairly nice, I suppose. I'll have to prime it a little bit to make sure it's not bumpy or whatever. Um, I had to attach this to the, to the, the cockpit area, but I took it back off to mask the windows here. I'm going to spray this with AS19 Intermediate Blue. Tell me that color. This is awesome. Okay, I used my airbrush for the very first time. I bought this airbrush in like September, end of September, on my payday, and um, now it is a couple of days before Christmas, and I finally, after three months, I finally gotten around to using it. So and I used it on the top part of the tie interceptor. Um, you might probably see me using the airbrush and other model kits before you ever see this video. Um, but anyhow, this is the first time I've used it, and I used my little airbrush cleaner, uh, cleaner thingy too. So I painted the top part. So what I want to do is, uh, you know, I, I, I masked this on the inside here, and I guess I can take this out now. But um, this model is kind of tricky. It would have been nice if they had this as a separate part, because there's going to be clear plastic. 
behind there. But unfortunately that didn't happen. So in order to try to make this look right, I uh, now I, I can take I can remove the masking tape here. There. So what I want to do is now that the top part is here, put the clear plastic in place, assemble the the cockpit here, and glue it together. And I'm going to have to work on this, though, because the, when these two parts fit together, they don't look quite right. So I'm going to have to use a lot of puttying and stuff. And I, um, I wanted to putty all that after the insides are complete. So if there's an easier way to do that, I don't know, but this is the way I'm doing it. Of course, I'll just mask off this top part here, because now this is painted. I swear, after... Oh, it's been, what, almost two years since I have used an airbrush, and it, it feels so good. <laughs> I'm, I've gotten better, I think, um, than when I last used it, because before I was using it on full blast, um, just like I would with a spray can, and I waste a lot of paint. So, that's not good. Now you can see, let me get the... Here is the canopy. It's a little bit darker. I wanted to just make it darker than this. So this, again, is the, the Tamiya Intermediate Blue, or whatever it's called. Yeah, Intermediate Blue. And I used this for that. So, and after using this, I went straight to using this. This is Mr. Color Lacquer. Um, this is Air Superiority Blue. Fine Molds calls for Air Superiority Blue, and that's what I used. Okay, so next step is going to attach this with glue because I just don't want any window of error. I don't want this thing to fall apart after it's already glued together and such. I mean, this is a NPC model after all, so this is proven not to be the best design. Uh, and I guess um, this NPC model is better than other Star Wars kits, I imagine. Nevertheless, I just want this to, uh, to work, come together right. Um, so the next part, actually, where's the part here? I need to put the glass ceiling on this thingy here. And, in fact, I might want to glue this to make sure it stays in place. Because you don't want this to come loose, even though it says, after all, that's a snap. Well, it's not going to be really cool if it's rattling around inside because the pieces of gotten loose or something. That would suck. There. Now it's secure. Dab a little bit of more glue here. Just to make sure it behaves. There. Okay, that looks great. in there totally tight now. I glue all along in here. Hopefully make it kind of melt together.
please don't come on down on me. There. Okay. Here we go. Looking pretty cool so far. Um, no? No, it's not. Freaking cockpit is looking lopsided now. Piece of crap, damn it. There we go. You behave. Uh, yeah, this, uh, I've read that this cockpit can be a bit uh, annoying. And this must be why. There. Okay, so I'm going to mask this. Mask this. Sand. Putty. And... Um, I might have to reprime it. We'll see. But, um, uh, so far it's looking fairly good, I guess. I'll just hold this together. Let the pieces kind of fuse together if I can. And then I'll start to putty. Uh, I don't know, maybe no putty? Well, we'll see. There we go. What I'm doing is masking off all the important areas. And then I'll be painting on top. Well, this is right. So I just apply the Tamiya masking tape and uh, just cut off the excess, just running the blade in the corner, not pushing too much. Don't want to gouge the plastic, just putting just barely enough pressure in order to cut the tape and then just making sure I'm you know, getting rid of the excess here. I might scratch the paint a little bit here, but that doesn't matter because I'm painting over it after this. So that's the idea. Both of the solar panels are done. Front and back. See? Mm. That's pretty cool. And then next is painting. Yay. That's pretty great, huh? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so. I used a little bit of putty to fill in the, the seams here. I don't know how it'll look until I go over it with a little bit of paint or something. But at least it's it feels smooth. It feels nice. Um, I sanded here on the sides here. It feels pretty smooth at least. So even if it makes a little bit of a bump, it won't be too bad. I'm hoping. So... Feels pretty good. Feels nice. So yeah, I, I sanded here and uh, also along here. So I taped all of this up in here because I want to keep this as that uh, steel, that dark steel, whatever it's called. And um, I'm protecting the glass that's here. So um, if it turns out that like this hatch is a little bit slightly different color than the body, then it'll be okay, you know, it'll add some flavor to it, I suppose. So, I'm going to go over it with uh, the gunmetal again. Or, well, sorry, the, the white gunmetal. Oh, which one did I use? I'm pretty sure it was the gunmetal. So, yeah, that's what that is. 
So yeah, light gun metal. The reason I'm doing that on this part is because I did the color on this, and when I go over it with the intermediate, uh, sorry, the air, super air superiority blue, I want the, the final blue to match the final blue here. So basically, what I'm doing with the windows, I'm going to do here too. And uh, in fact, like these little caps here that, that uh, fit in here, um, same thing is happening with them too. So yeah, it is kind of nice living in Shizuoka because um, not only is it the home of lots of really great plastic model companies, but it's actually, it's not too cold, so I can open up the window here with my, uh, with my, my spray booth here, put those vents outside, and, uh, I mean, it's cold, and it's kind of fogging up the windows here, but it's not terrible. My in-laws live in Nagano, Ken. I go up there quite a lot. Actually, after Christmas, I'm going up there, and it's going to be freaking cold. But Shizuoka is pretty mild. Uh, one of the famous things about Shizuoka is um, uh, oranges, mikan, tangerines, uh, mandarin oranges. So, because of the mild climate here, it's, it's pretty nice. So anyhow, I'm going to do some painting tonight. And then tomorrow is Christmas Eve, yay. And then, uh, hopefully, I'll paint the rest of this. Yay. It looks pretty good. This is uh, I went over this with my my wonderful airbrush, and I think it, the paint looks pretty good. It looks pretty uniform. There's a couple of little spaces that are not quite perfect, but it might kind of add a little bit of realistic flavor to the to the paint job. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Yay! Okay, what I'm, what I'm doing now is peeling off the masking, and it is looking pretty freaking cool. Uh, see, I've already done this, and it turned out perfect. Totally perfect on both sides, and i um, anticipating this should turn out also very great as well. I hope, I hope, I hope. So, the catch is, is just to push, press firmly, and then for novice modelers, which I kind of still am. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't have any any false pride or anything, but um, if you're new to this kind of thing, you just have to make sure to really press. And what I was doing is with the with the X-Acto knife, I was cutting it close, as, I, as close as I can. So now, when I'm pulling this all up, it's working out just great. Now when I uh, was putting the when I, when I was putting this on, uh, first it was a little bit time consuming, but then I kind of got a uh, certain rhythm to it and noticed that like the angles kind of fit together in certain ways. So when, when, you, when you cut something, it, you can kind of reuse it for a different angle elsewhere in the, in the masking procedure. So this is turning out pretty freaking cool. So I understand that the fine molds tie interceptor has, because uh, it has, it has like, like different parts. I have the I don't have the fine molds tie interceptor, but I do have the fine molds tie fighter, and this is like a separate piece. And then like the frame kind of sandwiches on top of it, so it's really easy to paint up. You don't have to use masking. People were getting disappointed a bit from what I saw online on forums and such. The the tie for uh, the Darth Vader tie fighter by fine molds had it, the wings all molded as one. But you just need to get used to using masking, and it's not that big a deal. And as you can see here, this is turning out perfect. It's 
turning out pretty nice. So let me skip ahead and show you the thinnest. Everything turned out just fine. Now, what I can do is kind of, kind of scrape a little bit if I want to. The paint is not quite totally set and uh, kind of bring out a little bit of detail on some of these raised parts here. Now I don't want to go overboard with weathering because that's more of a Rebel Alliance kind of a thing. Not so much an Empire because the Empire has uh, I, I imagine they have the, the, the money and the resources for a good upkeep a good upkeep on their on their fighters and such. So I'm just uh, just do a little bit, just to give it a little bit of uh, some flavor. This looks pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. Let me just uh, continue to weather this as such. Before the paint totally sets. This would be pretty cool. Neat. Stay tuned. Nice, nice, nice. Look at that. Cool. Okay, I have done my final clear coat, the matte coat. So right now I'm going to peel off the masking here. And then I will be done, I believe. I think I'll do a slight little tiny bit of weathering, but not much. Um, I think it's customary to when when you're building models of uh, Imperial fighters and such to not really do much um, weathering because um, you, you typically you think of their Imperial forces are always uh, you know they got they have the funds and the resources to keep everything kind of tip top shape. So aside from a little bit of paint scratches that I've done I think it looks okay and I, here there's a little bit of weaker paint I, I, I could have gone over it more but I, I just decided not to so it kind of makes the paint look a little bit faded but it's not all beat up so I think I am not going to glue the wings on this is a, stat, a snap model after all. So, if I leave it as is, then it'll be easier to put away in a box later. You know, if, uh, if I'm going to be transporting it and you wanna, whenever I eventually I'll move to a different place, um, this will be easily disassembled. So, looking at the box, So, now this is a little bit more three-dimensional on the sides here, these uh, thingies, now the, the solar panels in the middle, and you got these uh, these laser cannons here, which they may or may not even use, I don't, they always seem to just use these for, I don't know about the, uh, the TIE Fighter game, I think the TIE Fighter game just had these, these four. Um, also, you, you see this detail here on the sides, and it's like a different color. There's nothing to do with this, because there is no detail there. They just kind of uh, overlooked that. So this is not a really highly accurate model. But it's big, so that's kind of cool for in and of itself, I suppose. Let's just slide this into position here. So, the clear coat, the dull coat has been put on, but it still has a little bit of a metallic sheen, which is pretty cool here. Hmm, I think the fine molds say to paint these parts black. I, I don't know. I, I don't have them with me right now. I, mean, I have the only just the TIE Fighter at home, and, uh, the Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, but I have yet to build those. But uh, right now I'm on vacation, so I don't have access to those. 
unless I look them up online. So that just snaps into position there. And there you go. So we're finished here. Pretty cool. I kind of like how this is a different color. I, it looks a lot nicer than just keeping it black like that. There's just no... doesn't really bring any... Um, any real detail to that. So I, I kind of like how it came out that way. So yeah, you can see this is a little bit flat. It doesn't have the detail that the other one does. I, I think after building this, I'm going to just buy the fine molds tie interceptor as well. <laughs> it'll be smaller, but it'll be fun to compare the two once I'm done. So, uh, lastly, I, I painted this this morning. Uh, this is the Return of the Jedi little thing here. I'm going to paint the base. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I already painted this. The, the base is going to be clear, so, but this kind of snaps on the base, I think, somehow. And, um, this is metallic black. What I'm going to do is go over this with red enamel paint and paint the Return of the Jedi, the, the, the lettering there, and uh, probably the border. It'll probably bring it out, make it look pretty nice, I think. So, I didn't bring any Tommy on masking tape with me, but I have some post it notes. I'll try using that instead. But, uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool. It's going to look neat. So. I think I might do a little bit of chalk dusting on this, but not much. Not, not really to the, to the point where I'm even going to really put on another flat coat. I don't think it should be necessary. Um, I don't really feel like uh, doing a lot of dirt streaks on this, but uh, stay tuned. I thought I might bring this to life a little bit more with just a tiny bit of dry brushing. I'm using testers. Steel. Just a little bit here and there. The dry brush kind of makes this a little bit more interesting. And then back here with all these, uh, the Greeblies. That looks kind of cool. There. Don't want to overdo it, but, uh, it kind of makes it a little bit more interesting looking. Nice. Mm. And of course in here too. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I think I'm done. I painted this metallic black, TS-40, metallic black, and I used uh, Tester's Gloss Red. I did not really need any masking after all. I think it looks okay the way it is. So that finishes it. This is complete. Everything looks really nice. I will have pictures of this on my website, Greg's Life. Uh, stevethefish.net slash life look for it in the sci-fi plastic model gallery so this has been a real fun build thanks for watching <laughs>